back in this bitch, uh Know we full attack in this shit, uh You know the full Mac came equipped Yo, 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 what's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the 8 Morning 92 Podcast We always keep it 100 with you I am your host, Harrison And I am back in effect Just took a little week off But how is everybody today? Thank you, thank you, thank you Everybody, I miss y'all, miss y'all, miss y'all so we will jump right up into it. Um, everything's went, um, I'm trying to think, what's gone through since I've uh, been away, picked up second class. So definitely glad for that. Uh, people know who know me for the military. Well, I just basically just mean I got promoted or ranked up for the people who don't know anything about the military. That just basically means for the test that I took in March, I scored high enough to make a promotion to the, the next rank. And anybody that knows my situation or why I was at the hospital currently because um, I was going to try to make the next rank because I was coming close to 10 years at the current rank I was. And in the military, you can only be to a certain point in a certain rank for so long. And then when you're in that rank at that, if you're in that rank too long, you're at what they call higher tenure. And basically you have to get out of the military. And so I was coming close to that rank that I was in and I thankfully picked up. Um, it was delayed because of prior situations, which a lot of y'all know earlier was well, basically late last year um, and kind of early, early, early into this new year that I was kind of removing myself from those situations that took a, that added to the length of time that I was waiting to go ahead and uh, take that promotion. But your boy finally made it. So, you know, all the people that held me back, eat a dick. I wish those people were here that uh, could feel that venom. But I do want to take these shout outs to thank just my, you know, my family that held me down through all this. You know, um, Tig A, I want to thank you. You know, my mom, my sisters, um, Vizzo, um, Banks, everybody that went through and just you know, help me get through all of these like trying periods. I want to thank uh, John. I want to thank Kendall. I want to thank Banks. I want to thank a magnitude of people, but in particularly for this particular cycle, because of what I picked it up with, I want to thank my, my ace, Boom Coon, Romy Ron, Jerome. I want to thank my dog, Corey. I want to thank Jameer. I want to thank my dog, Barrett. I want to thank, um, Osborne. I want to thank Obaye. I also want to thank um, Malnado. I want to thank everybody in deck. And they just kind of told me to stay the course and, and it worked out for the best. And those are the people that um, I want to celebrate their own deployment, but I want to celebrate those because, because of the, what I was promoted with was on that time period at Vessel. Those were the people that were kind of the guiding lights to make sure that I was successful the way I was. So I want to take this time and give those people their flowers. Um, I couldn't be here without y'all. So thank you to all y'all people. And thank you for everybody to tell me on that journey through what I was on that boat that I didn't get a chance to say, because a lot of times when I get on this mic, if it's not written down, and I'm not reading it. I'm not going to have it on the top of my dome to remember i'm gonna think about it afterwards so i just want to say anybody that helped me while i was on the gun hall i want to thank you and all the people that have something to do with it that you know i ain't fuck with you that you know you did something you know fuck you. so eat a dick bitch you couldn't hold me down jump down one bring back two on your ass so you know bring it in so i did want to take that out that time to you know give a congrats to myself um I was talking to my brother, Fui, which is another person, Hickman. Uh, I forgot to thank them. So that's why I said it's, it's, it's hard to it's hard to think about it in the moment. But I want to thank those, especially uh, Tierra and uh, or Terry and uh, Fui, because all the people like I'm talking to all the time during that process. And I was just telling them, I was just like, you know, not picking up on that ship does not make it it's been keeping me from like just fully celebrating because i want to put a middle finger up to those motherfuckers that try to hold me back and it's just been kind of like i want to celebrate it but i gotta just let my nuts hang on their face and i feel like that's probably like a just growing process to where i have to take my accomplishments and be able to like move on but i'm not past that part of my life like if something happens i'm not gonna forget and unless you feel it 
I'm taking that shit to the grave. I was just talking about pettiness on the last episode I did with the elephant. And that just comes to like what the level it is that I'm at. I'm just like, it's not over. It's 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 gotta go like Pusha Icy said, get it back in blood. And it's just those things are keeping me from reaching the level of gratification that I need to be giving myself and appreciation that I need to sit back and take for myself that I was able to stick through because I'm not the most religious or um, person or spiritual. I'm not going to be sitting there telling you to like all these type of um, scents and sage or sit here and tell you I go to church and everything. But I do think that God, I, I, I prophesize this to anybody. I preach it. God will never put anything on your shoulders that you can't handle. And I feel like this is an example of that because there's nobody else that could have gone through what I've gone through to get to where I've been through to just know that you just don't give up. And a lot of times when people say, do you want to go speak to somebody? You want to go speak to somebody? Well, what are they going to do when you still got to go through it? It's nothing that somebody can sit there and gear you up and tell you what you're going to go through. And you'd be like, oh, OK. And even if you know what's coming, you don't know the, the magnitude that it's going to put on you mentally. And so, you know, I just knew that when things were just down and down and down and out, I knew that it was a reason that I had to go through it, it because I knew that it was a task that I couldn't. I'm sorry. It was a task that only I could handle. And so that is basically where I'm at, just th- t- telling myself, like, when you go for and a lot of things that like I was just thinking of that transpired before that, like I thought was bad ended up working out in my favor in the long haul because without those things being in place it wouldn't have worked out on the back half for me even to have left that ship or me even to be in a position to get the the mark that i needed to pass so it's just things that kind of go full circle that you just got to sit there and take your hat off and just fall, trust the process and that is just something i need to i trust the process i just need to get to a point to where I can leave the baggage at the door. But I will say this, it's always been my motivator, you know, um, to prove somebody wrong, to prove somebody this, this, that had this type of interpretation of me to be like, hey, I know what I can do. Just because you don't like or believe in me, that's you. I'm not going to sit here and tell myself that I can't do something because you weak or because you don't believe or because you don't do something. That's you. And I can't sit here and act like, I am going to use a different avenue for motivation because if I look at the results, it may not be where this person might or when this person wanted or when I maybe have wanted it sometime because as people, we want things instantaneously, instantaneously, especially in today's society. But it's happened in this work. So like a lot of times when I say or when people ask me, you know, do you have somebody specific that you talk to or do you feel like? And I say no, because I feel like it's still work that needs to be done. Like Kobe said, it's work that needs to be done. So there's no time to sit back at times and go through and unpack and just um, like soak and the rejuvenation of joy and accomplishments because you have to finish the job and life is not done until you're done. So, um, but I do need to stop at times to fill up the car for gas and just tell myself, Hey bro, like you can still uplift yourself while you're on this journey. So it it was just a little, like a little side tip to start the show to, you know, give myself a little appreciation while kind of unpacking with myself. Like why can't you get it? Why can't you give yourself the appreciation without it having to be in a specific way? And it's probably something I work on. I don't know if anybody hears this. Y'all can message me and give me y'all opinion on this. But um, I'm going to move right along. You know, this is the 4th of July when I'm filming this episode or for whoever listening to it while I'm recording this episode. And I'm off today. I told y'all when we did the Juneteenth episode, it was an off day. It's Monday. And if you thought I was going to work because this isn't Black Independence Day, hell no, because I know white people took off for Juneteenth. And I just, you know, I find I I didn't see as much uproar as I saw yesterday, but I did see some people still spewing out, you know, comments and things for 
um, 4th of July. And it's just kind of funny because right now, Juneteenth is so new that they don't even really know how to market Juneteenth other than like tragedy and or overcoming tragedy, which is what you always do with black events. And 4th of July is managed and celebrated completely different. You have hot dogs, you have fireworks, you have like guys on stilts with American colors and stuff saying America, America. It's a parade for the 4th of July. So um, it's, it's, and like I said, I said it's fireworks. So, I mean, what are we going to shoot off for Juneteenth? It's just a bunch of messages and reminders and education for white folks and black folks on just what it means to be free. And it is it's just that's where we're at right now because it's kind of new. So but also at the same time, it's a day off um, free grilling downstairs. Uh, you know, if I decide to or if not, you know, you already know my stance on grilling now. Uh you know, keeping it simple. But like I said, it's July 4th. Uh, I got a whole bunch of fireworks to my right, and I'm going to let that shit go off like Baghdad. But, you know, um, some bad things did happen for July 4th. There was a shooting in Highland Park, Illinois, and we're back at the gun crisis as it goes. Um, I just don't know. We're at that point now to where, what's the point of me even saying something? Because we know what to do. Why do I need to say something? I have a rule when it comes to anybody that's an adult. If you're over the age of 18, because this is a this is a thing that I hold myself to. I hold myself to a standard of I know perfection is not going to be something that's attainable because it's an opinionated word. But I'm not going to hold you to a standard that I wouldn't hold myself to. That means if I make a bad decision, I've already said in my head, I'm going to accept the consequences. So that means if I am told something and I still go ahead and do something, I'm not going to sit here and soak and I'm not going to sit here and be like, well, you don't understand. You don't do this. If something bad happens to me, whether it's jail, whether it's I ruin a relationship, whatever it is, I knew going forward, if I continue to do something after I was told, then that's what's going to happen. Move it to the July 4th. And like I said, the same with grown people. Actually, don't let me miss. Don't let me jump too far ahead. We're grown people. If I tell a grown person something one time and they go ahead and do the opposite my advice to you my advice giving to you is done because you knew exactly what it was and then a lot of people like to run victim or just say that they were in a different mind state or whatever well a lot of times when somebody's giving you advice if they're giving you advice and they say they've done it before you should take heed to that i'm not saying that it's easy not to always listen but when you're a grown person if somebody gives you advice to me, at least, I'm actively taking an interest in you personally to see that your well-being. And if you go out and do the opposite, that means you don't give a fuck. So why should I give a fuck about whatever the outcome is? I'm not going to give you advice. You got one shot. So it goes to the, the thing with the active shooting and the 4th of July parade. It's a parade. It's families out there. You just had a shooting in Uvalde, Texas. I want to say in May, uh, yeah, May the 25th, because they were watching it. You're getting video, video, video surveillance, left, left, and right. Are y'all in the building? Uh, you know, y'all not doing anything for 58 minutes. He's basically slaughtering y'all children, but because it's not the right people's children, nobody's going to do anything. And it's a parade. You can't go out anywhere, and you know exactly what to do. It is do something about guns, but it's not going to happen because you've seen, I think Van said this when he was on the show, America doesn't care about kids. Well, America don't really care about families unless you are a part of whoever these clan, new clan members are. I'm going to talk about y'all in a second. You ain't going to get too much of my time. But um, like unless you're part of the elite, elite top tier people that are running or assigning or approving stuff like the people that just did the Roe versus Wade, you're, they're not going to care about anything. I mean, literally, they stormed the Capitol and you got people that are of thinking that it was just a dust up. That's treason. But if you protest equality, they want to label you Antifa and they want to hit you with tear gas and everything. It's a boy. I want to say his name is Jalen Townsend, Jalen Walker. Jalen Walker was shot over 60 times by the Akron police. Now we've all watched enough movies. It only really take one good shot to kill somebody if you put it the bullet in the right place. For some odd reason, when it comes to 
people of color, black specifically, there seems to be a level of restraint that goes out the window that you have for somebody that runs into a grocery store and opens fire on people or the same level of restraint that you have for 58 minutes before you decide to charge into a school of children when you had it and then you came out and lied about it or the same restraint that you had when you have when you walk somebody from uh, Dylan Roof, wherever he was in uh, Carolina, and you had him and walked him to the car restraint. Now, you somehow seem to let it fly with these pistols and you let their yapa chop when it comes to somebody black. But then it seems and that's the first option, but it seems to be the last option. And you got to be and I've seen policemen hit by people of their own skin and complexion. And it seems to never register as any type of threat. It seems like, you know, it's always a bad apple. And it's just again, what what what, what you gonna say? What what can we say? What can anybody say? Who needs to get hit um, before anybody does anything? I mean, the actual president was one of the orchestrators of the J- January six uh, terrorism attack, and it's kind of like people still want to defend it. It's 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 the same as trying to talk to somebody who wants to defend the Confederate flag to me, you know. Um, what oh it's about farming it's about the south okay well it doesn't matter about what your interpretation is if you know that there's only a specific type of people that sit there and worship the same with people who wear make america great again hats um they were aligning themselves with a certain viewpoint so yes the flag started out as the south and farming but a certain group of people started aligning their views with this symbol. So that symbol no longer means anything. It's like when people want to sit there and say, uh, well, nigger is a certain type of uh, derogatory mark as, uh, I'm sorry, derogatory word for black people. And then you have people say, well, no, you just dropped the ER and the A, and then people have aligned themselves with a whole different meaning. The word is still trash doesn't matter how you try to define nigga or nigger the word is still a derogatory word in general so it doesn't matter what you're trying to align yourself with but ain't nobody doing nothing so what, what more can you do how many posts or anything can you do about it um i have not put anything out about the roe versus wade because i'm not a woman so for me to sit up here and speak on that particular topic I have not done so out of respect to women because the change wasn't made to to uh, affect anything that I can do as my body. So I was going to try to see if I could find somebody to come on the show to speak on it. I haven't found it. I may get it probably like in the next episode or so just to talk about just their opinion on it and just what it goes into depth when they hear that. I will say the role that men do play in it is they don't get pregnant. Women do not get pregnant by themselves. So when you get into these relationships and, or you're thinking about doing something irresponsible, whether it's assault or anything, or let's not even take it to those extremes, whether it's just a one night stand, know that she no longer, or the rights of her are no longer being afforded to her to just get rid of it. But you can always walk your ass away or you can always block a number or anything out there. So when it so at the end of the day, when a child is born, this this law affects. The woman. But a child is affected by two people because two people had to cause it to get there. So I just hope guys take this time to really put their two cents in shutting up. Don't put their two cents in the comments of it, but put their two cents in reminding other men that once this baby comes out, this does not give a free pass for us to, you know what? I'm not about to do all that shit. Just be conscious. Just think about what you're doing. Be a little bit more considerate of the times and just just think. Um, I don't know if people really have been paying attention to the, the like the shift and the pendulum of things. I think they were even talking about banning gay marriage and I don't know. I just, you just kind of looking at this shit and it's just like, it's, it's like reversing segregation. It's like, we kind of gave motherfuckers too much freedom 
And now we're kind of going back and back and back and back. And what's next? I mean, how much longer until we see whites only bathroom, colors only bathroom, how much? And then you're going to try to use something smart to to say um, that it is like um, you're going to use a different word. I'm sorry. You're going to use a different word to try to change it over and say whites only or colors only. You're going to find a way to systematically make it legal and act like we don't know what segregation is what our big ass ages and i just look at how things are i mean look how quickly everybody wanted to label the black lives matter and antifa yet i'm seeing pop-ups of proud boys everywhere and i'm trying to figure out how long y'all want to make them a terror until y'all want to make them uh label them a terrorist group why isn't people jumping out in arms to stop them when they are real they're literally rioting they're literally causing uproar. They're covering their faces. At least people with Black Lives Matter didn't have uh, the, the sissiness that y'all have to sit there and hide y'all face. I mean, if you if you proud, then proud to show your face. And if you want to talk it and walk it like you talk it, I think the really thing that annoys me about them is which I don't really go into it is the fact that if you want to I'm, I'm a person about actions and a lot of things that have been annoying me a lot is that people do a lot of talking. People do a lot of caping, a lot of capping and all this shit. And when it's time to be about that action, I don't see any action. I don't see any lights. I don't see any cameras. I don't see none of that. We don't, we still on the first take because we can't even get you to go to the action. And so if you're going to sit there and talk all that rhetoric about, you know, the, the, the whatever your rhetoric is about white power, it's new Klansmen. And ain't nobody talking enough about that. As soon as something come up, it's another distraction piece. It's another distraction piece. Hell, we was going to talk about the little baby daddy with four kids. I was going to talk about it. I decided I didn't really give a fuck that much about it to go into depth to making like an episode about it. I just thought the memes and stuff were funny. I I just think that, like I said, at a certain point is going to time to be about that action. And I will say this about black people because they were protesting about the Jalen Waters and I'm sorry for forgetting it again, but I do have it right here. Jalen Walker shooting. When is enough going to be enough for black people? When is enough going to be enough for black people to keep showing this level of restraint? Huh? Martin Luther King turned the other cheek and they put a bullet in the other one. So all I'm saying is all these protests, y'all getting spray, y'all getting tear gas, y'all getting everything. Yet you see in Proud Boys are just being able to walk to their car as they try to storm in the places. When is enough going to be enough to where y'all sit here and keep talking all this shit about this peaceful protest? Peaceful protesting is not a right and a fortitude that black people are afforded. Getting regular routine traffic stops and sitting there talking about what is your badge and recording is not a right that black people are afforded. Being a 13 year old boy or a teenager is white privilege. That is not something that black people get afforded to. You know why? Because if you're a 13 year old black kid and you do something, they look at you as a threat. They look at you anything else but a teenager or a boy who makes young decisions and mistakes. And this is not about to be no race episode. So hear me out. This is coming to an end. I just want to know when is enough going to be enough to where you stop with the high road shit and level the playing fields. It's not this whole thing about we take the high road and we do, we just, we don't go to their level. It's almost like they manipulating us to think that that is the way of doing things to where, you know what, we just going to keep doing this. We're going to keep doing this. And what karma has been shown or given or anything to show that like, if you keep doing this, this is going to turn out this way. I, it, no crime has gotten any better. The, I mean, all this recording of police brutality, they ain't done anything. All these un, unneeded slayings of unarmed black children or people, even if they have a situation, don't even level. I've seen one situation where a white guy was fighting a policeman and they ain't take the gun out one time. They had a whole like dump truck or whatever used to help move the cop car, do something to the cop car. And there was not one gun taken out at all. So at what point are y'all going to stop? Are we going to stop being a fool and stop just sitting over there talking about rights and a fortitude and anything? Because it's not a level playing field. Stop marching, stop protesting, stop doing all this shit. The same. Do you see how they is? It's, it's a certain select few. Women ain't got their own rights. Um, black people ain't got their own rights. These laws are made for white men, made by old ass white men. 
So just stop thinking that the law is going to protect you. I think the perfect there are people that follow the law and there are people that sit there and say this isn't justified. This isn't what's right. And I think those people are great. But those people are naive to sit there and think that just because you follow the law and do things that are meant in the name of justice, that is going to be fair across the board. And those are the people that are blocking out the real um, those are the people that are blocking out the real progress because you'll send them to a person that's going to do the justice by the book. But then somebody who's really out here committing crime, you're going to send them to the person that's going to let them off and be crazy. Like uh, what's his name? Kyle Rittenhouse out here doing all this crying and he need to be a victim and hugs and all this shit. Y'all going to send them to them. So it's just enough is enough. I ain't about to. I'm done off of that. That's how we go from there. Proud boys, I said my piece on y'all. Um, if you really about that, stop being pussy. Show your face. You out there running this shit. I also notice y'all also again, black people notice this. Make it you notice they don't go in the right neighborhoods. I ain't never seen them go to Compton. I ain't never seen them go to Crenshaw. I ain't never seen them go to O Block. I ain't never seen them go to Lishy. I ain't never seen them go out to Antioch. I ain't never seen them go out to East Nashville because they had a riot in Franklin on the Juneteenth parade. But they ain't bring their ass out to Antioch. They ain't they ain't come too far. So I just know that y'all so proud, but y'all ain't stupid. So fuck all that extra stuff they talking about. You know, they want to talk about fucking up they stuff or we messing up our communities doing riots. They literally out there storming their own shit because they thinking we they losing some type of power or ground. Who cares? They ain't came to none of the hoods. They ain't up in Dade County. They up at 305. They ain't over there uh, where, um, what is it, Opalaka? They ain't nowhere. They ain't, uh-uh. They ain't about that. So they know they ain't too proud. You see what I'm saying? They ain't too proud to get their ass whooped. So fuck what they talking about. So that's another reason why I pay them niggas no mind because they know what's up. You know what I'm saying? It, they they ain't go to the right parts of D.C. You know, they, they like Takashi. They go to the motherfucking part of it and make sure they get them 10 seconds and then get the fuck out of it. So fuck what they talking about. Um, That is what I got for that piece. And I'm moving on. Uh, R. Kelly finally got his just dues. Uh, It seems like the only verses we will get from Robert Kelly is Robert Kelly versus the state of whoever the fuck is prosecuting him. I will say uh, I'm not surprised. I do have a couple issues with this whole R. Kelly trial. I've been sitting back here thinking, and this has been since the R. Kelly document has dropped. Um, if anybody has been listening to the show for a long time, you know, I'm a type of person that's like wants to keep if somebody's going to do one for if somebody's going to act a certain way for one person or one group or anything, I would like you to be that way for everybody across the board. And for the R. Kelly situation, I felt like this mirrored a lot of OJ going to jail for what he did with the thievery and not the murder. And I'm going to come back to the R. Kelly one when I give you my reason for why the OJ. OJ is a piece of shit to me. OJ is a worthless motherfucker to me. OJ is trash. I think OJ did it. I know OJ did it. Everybody know OJ did it because he's going to tell you in a book how he did it. OJ had no ties with the black community at all. And when he did everything he wanted to, you remember they asked me, they said, are you not black? He said, I'm OJ. OJ distanced himself from black people at all even when he was riding around town after the murder and everybody was going through trying to make sure oj made it home i think al collins was the name he was in that white bronco acting crazy knowing that nigga wasn't gonna shoot himself he said when he got back to his crib in bel-air he said what are these niggas doing here in bel-air oj ain't want to fuck with niggas at all black people none of that until it was time to search his house and they took down this ain't no fabrication they took down all the pictures of anything white and turned that motherfucker into an african-american museum and then at that point oj started going to black churches and everything and the only thing that really got oj off other than the fact that um man what is his name and again i apologize for not getting um well other than Furman fucking it up for being racist it was the other guy that was on the defense, the black guy, and I can't remember his name. And I'll get it after this, and I'm gonna be mad. But if he did not have him try on that glove, because leather shrinks after a certain time, it was an open shut case. OJ was going to jail. But this is what fucked uh, everything up for OJ. I'm sorry, what fucked up everything in benefit for favor favoring OJ? That Rodney King just got his ass whooped. 
and black people already didn't trust the police if you ever watch snowfall you can see that the california treatment of black people and their liking and respect for the police there was none so if you go and watch it um they were already kind of uneasy and already perturbed with the police department in general especially with somebody uh of color and then mark Furman's case came through i'm sorry mark mark Furman's statement came through then he got her plea to fifth he need legal representation so he ain't racist and then they were on trial for like what three four five six months they couldn't go home or anything so a lot of factors ended up working in oj's favor so he got off because of those things yet when it came to paying money he still had to pay the families they found him guilty on that you speed it up oj goes to jail off of stealing his own stuff but the years don't really make sense for the crime except for the fact that this is how you make up for not getting his ass the first time because in that other time when he got off oj wild and he going out doing basically all these money grabs and white spring break with oj and if i would have did it which was wild as fuck to me if i would have did it this how i would have did it okay cool so then you make up for when you catch him stealing and you make back those years speed it up to r kelly you have r kelly and nowhere did i agree with anything that r kelly did but what i have a problem with especially with the celebration of him getting 30 years what are y'all celebrating are y'all celebrating the fact that a known predator that y'all knew since the 90s was out that got locked up and finally safe off the streets oh i'm sorry uh, off the streets and making the streets safe again that is finally behind bars or are you happy that one you can go back to listen to his music because y'all really fake care two it takes y'all off the hook because everybody was complicit to what he was doing everybody knew what r kelly was doing so let's speed it back to the time i was watching um miss pat and this tv show on bt plus very good the miss pat show also the upshaws are back home so everybody make sure you watch those too so I'm watching Miss Pat and I go back and look in her comedy skit. She got pregnant at 13 by a guy that was married. And she also got pregnant again by at 15 with her first two kids. She incorporates that in the TV show, which happened in real life. And she also incorporates it in her comedy special. Now, if you watch the color purple, Celie was given to Mr. when I think she was like, 13 or 14 and her sister was like not too much older they were kids like 12 i think it was her little sister too and mr was a grown ugly grown ass man to sit there and sit there and say that a predatorial man talking to a younger woman was not accepted by those people was why the shit got away my mom is 13 years younger than my pops ever since i found out that age difference it has been disgusting to me it's been gross it's been nasty i don't care what y'all say even now when motherfuckers say oh i date somebody that's a whole bunch of years older than me i say what y'all got in common what is it's always been nasty to me i was born in 1990. so to me that's never been acceptable now to speed it to my point r kelly gets 30 years and it's just like the ray rice situation ray rice told the ravens exactly what happened to him and his old lady and they didn't really want to do anything to him. It's exactly what he told you what happened. And then for somehow, after the video comes out of Ray Rice knocking his old lady out, then you suspend Ray Rice and he's no longer in the league. It's the same thing that you did, but then you got you see the video now it makes it worse. Now it changes the stand. Now it's something different than anything that you've seen. You know, it's the same with Miles Bridges. If Miles Bridges is getting arrested for domestic violence the picture shouldn't change your viewpoint on miles bridges for domestic violence i I don't i don't get why why certain things need to happen so we speed it to the r kelly documentary and they sit over putting clues together like if he got Aaliyah pregnant and you know putting all those people in in those little basically trapping their ass but there were parents that were complicit in that and then this whole time the nigga basically singing the shit to you in some of the songs seems like you ready uh what is it um you remind me of my jeep i want to ride it because the nigga can sing and just like the boondock said what the hell is wrong with you people 
Every famous nigga that gets arrested is not Nelson Mandela. We all know the nigga can sing. But what happened to standards? What happened to bare minimums? You a fan of R. Kelly? You want to help R. Kelly? Then get some counseling for R. Kelly. Introduce him to some older women. Hide his camcorder. But don't pretend like the man is a hero. And stop the damn dancing. Act like you got some goddamn sense, people. Damn. Don't play around here. Sorry, because he could sing and because he was talented, everybody excused everything he did until the documentary came out. The nigga was pissing on people. Everybody had the tape. The little girl looked young. And I saw that tape when I was 11. and She looked my age. Uh, he was known to doing this. People were, uh, people said at the time, I think he was messing with Aaliyah. And then what happened? Nothing happens. So it was nasty to me then. It was nasty. And then everybody knew, but because Step in the Name of Love came out and same girl and everything came out, y'all don't do anything. So when the documentary came out, that ain't you changed my opinion on him. It it puts some things in light to where certain songs just sound weird. Like Aaliyah's album sounds more weird to me than R. Kelly's albums do because she sounds like she's talking to a grown ass man. Age ain't nothing but a number and whatever the rest of goes. So her first album, the one she did with him sounds very inappropriate. So why is R. Kelly a monster now to you, to the people that have been grown and have known these things? What is the celebration for? What are we celebrating? That y'all finally acted on and putting this nigga behind bars when he should have been behind bars before Fiesta, before niggas was fucking with the same girls. I know him and Usher wasn't fucking with the same girl right now because I'm pretty sure Usher's girl was a grown ass woman. He was fucking with real ass children. Everybody knew the nigga had a problem. Everybody from that era had a problem with young ass women. And nobody says anything about that. That whole era was fucked up. Looking at young predatorial ass girls. Shit, I think um, what's the nigga's name who had a daughter and it was his stepdaughter. She's Asian and he ended up marrying her. Shit, Elvis was married to a 13 year old and y'all just made a movie about this motherfucker. I haven't seen it. So I'm hoping they address it in the documentary. But th that type of shit was looked at as just the times. It's the same kind of with Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby is a pro he's a piece of shit to me too, but Bill Cosby is a piece, I mean, um, a product of what y'all allowed. And now when you get some sense 20, 30 years later, the whole moral of all this is are you happy that somebody is righting the wrongs of something y'all should have did a long time ago? Or are you actually happy that a monster is off the street? Because I feel like the longer that you listen to the songs, making them number one, making them platinum, calling the Pied Piper R&B, saying he revolutionary, all this shit, y'all were in, y'all were enabling, and y'all were um, enticing and contributing to the monster. Because if you would have stopped all this. He wouldn't have had the platforms to go tour. He wouldn't have had the money or any anything the budgets anything to continue a career but because he had the ignition remix you didn't care so now you're getting the same information in 2019 or 2020 or whatever that documentary drop and now it changes you i think what happened with the girls gone wild guy is worse because I never knew anything about the dude because I didn't really keep up with him. But R. Kelly shit was always public to people of my community. Uh, and then people um, people are or let's even go to the woman who was working with Jer Jeffrey Epstein and she getting 20 years, which people are being dumb talk, trying to compare the years like they still long as fuck and they probably should have got life. But there were politicians and people there. Why aren't y'all prosecuting them? Why aren't these people looked at in the same light? So I just I just think that is I just think that it's really, really I need to know what people are celebrating. And that's why I'm gonna leave it right there. Y'all see my opinion on it. He was wrong then, he was wrong now. Nigga got what he deserved. It seemed like it's what what am I 32? 32 years too late. It's a lot of people that have been victimized, scarred, and ruined in their lifetime because of this. And everybody that sat there and let this motherfucker's career go on are implicators and their trauma so that's my opinion on it 
I'll let y'all give me your own DM me, send me a text, however, whatever, whatever way you want to give me your opinion on. Let me know. My next topic is before we wrap, we got the NBA free agency coming up and it started with a bang, but it is stalled out. Yes. Uh, Kyrie and Westbrook did opt into their contracts for people that have been keeping up, but now KD wants out. I think KD's seen it and he was just kind of like, yo, bro. I it's a lot of things. Let me let me let's let's talk. Let's let's go to the, the first part. I'm gonna come back to KD. So we got KD uh Kyrie. He said he wanted to go. I think it was after last season, a lot of scrutiny and everything. I think you could kind of see that it was coming to him possibly leaving or wanting out. I think the only best or the most logical one is him getting back with Braun. I could kind of see it when in the Boston years that him and LeBron would maybe get back together. Never knew how it would go about. The whole KD and Kyrie relationship just seemed weird to me in general because how would y'all best friends? But who knows? Everybody acting like they know somebody's life. So now you got the free agency situation. And then let's swing it back to Kevin Durant. Now Kevin Durant is seeking a trade. But Kyrie opted into his contract for this year for 36 million dollars because i mean let's be real russell westbrook opted for 47 million dollars the way that these motherfuckers is acting they're not getting a contract like they are that they got for this amount of guaranteed money anymore so they're gonna take it i don't even blame them i think it's kind of fucked up from the business standpoint of it because then it's like dang you kind of financially strapped my team to not really improve improve but the team should have thought of that when they got you so not go no harm no foul and if i just said you never gonna get that contract again let me get my 36 million let me get my 47 million dollars and let's just call it a day so neutral on that end go to the kd side i guess kd had enough said he wants to go i think a lot of other factors kind of go into the kd situation and i feel that the warriors winning play way more of a part in kevin durant wanting to go to a different team than Kyrie's situation in general because Kyrie was a headache the year before when he was taking personal time off to go to birthday parties and watch town hall meetings and things like that but Kevin Durant still played they got through a playoff series and then this year they got swept and then Kyrie actually did play in the playoffs and they still didn't win with Kyrie dropping like 35 points or 32 points against Boston I think the Warriors play more of a factor of Kevin Durant wanting to go than Kyrie Irving because I mean you can't say the Nets did not do what you wanted I mean they got you James Harden didn't work out they got you Blake Griffin I mean some of these motherfuckers is old as fuck but they still supplied you with everything that you could have wanted and you just didn't get it done I think that the scrutiny of his legacy and as much he said it doesn't bother uh, Kevin Durant Kevin Durant knows that when they won that title without him it won vaulted Steph back up to a level that he'll never get past because that's the reason why he probably left because he did not like the credit he was not getting versus Steph. Then on top of that, it showed that the Warriors just got motherfucking greedy. We was like, fuck it. We going to just take over and get our ring. So when this shit is all over, can't nobody say the Warriors weren't the dynasty or weren't a team to be fucked with for the rest of this time. And then also, it really lets you know, and we'll dig deep, you know, they really know that Braun was going to fuck somebody's career up because that lets you know. I wonder how I think the Warriors probably still could have. Warriors may not have gotten back to two of those finals. They may have gotten back to the year after Kevin got there. Well, yeah, the, the not the year Kevin got there, but the year after that, they may have gotten there or the one where Toronto, well, not the one Toronto because Braun already left, but they know that Braun was taking that chip because, I mean, come on now. So with that being said, as much as, because the only person that says that Kevin Durant went in LeBron James' house and beat LeBron as if he didn't have four other people was Skip Bayless. So I think with all that scrutiny, they had the 73 and win, 73 and 19, they lost. And then you have, you have them win it without you. And then you lose in the first round, and then you don't win another series. Whoever won the championship first, the other people were going to feel it. And it just so happened to be the Warriors. And it did not help the fact that KD picked a horrible running mate to go with. And then on top of that, the Warriors, who got bounced out the playoffs last year by the playing game by Memphis Grizzlies, go back and win it with the original three people that they won the first one with, cementing themselves as the catalyst 
of that dynasty. Don't know how many they would have won without KD. It probably would have expanded longer. Who knows? But we do know that they won two without him and they won two with him. But they were already destined. Who was going to beat them? So it looks more of a scapegoat on him. And now he looks worse because you went to the Brooklyn Nets on your own and you're leaving again and making it look like a fuss. The Warriors already got there. Steph living his best life. He got his MVP. He has four rings. He has two MVPs unanimously. He has the finals MVP. He he has nothing to worry about. He's an all-time three-point scorer. He's literally he's, – he's on the team he started with. He's literally beloved. He changed the game of the NBA. You have LeBron. LeBron is one – he's about to be the number one scorer of all time next year. He's won a championship everywhere he's gone. And you have not beaten LeBron without four Hall of Famers because LeBron has dominated you. And you've also not gotten past the – what is it? Uh, the, the second round since you left. You've never made it back to a finals without Steph Curry. That, those, those are facts. So I just think he's eating him up. And you could tell it's eating him up because how much he responds and say he doesn't respond. And I'll give Draymond this because some of the stuff he's saying is just yapping. Some of the stuff he's saying could have facts to it. Who knows? But Draymond has won. Um, I don't agree with a lot of the stuff he said. I just like with the Jalen Brown stuff, I think he can be. I don't think he got in Jalen's head. I think Draymond getting benched had more of getting Draymond back on Draymond because Jalen Brown was still scoring like 27 points in the game. I just think that when Draymond finally got shut down and Draymond was like, bro, I got to do something and went back to being Draymond, that changed the series more than him getting into Jalen Brown's head. But, like, the Warriors were always the Warriors. Steph just needed a little bit of help from the rise. I just like it that it was a clear cut that it was Steph who won this, conf- I mean, the M- finals MVP versus Iggy or whoever. It's clear cut, so there's nothing else to talk about. But it also shows that, them boys were like brothers, and KD was always going to be a cousin. And I think that shit is eating him alive because he was already getting hell for not winning a championship. Then you get hell for going to a ch- team that beat you when you was up 3-1, and then you win these two championships. But, I mean, you got finals MVP over LeBron who, I mean, come on now, be real. Y'all all five basically jumping him, and now they win one without you. And you look worse because you got Kyrie and y'all get swept. So, um, you know, I had it right there. I personally think Kyrie is a cancer uh, anywhere he's gone. Kyrie's never gotten a team. Before Brian got to Cavaliers, they were always picking, like, number one. They had Wiggins, Bennett, a bunch of other people. I think Tristan Thompson. All those people came to the Cavs. LeBron come back. They were playoff finals bound, basically finals bound every year he was there. Kyrie has done nothing in his career. I knew when he went to Boston. And that year that he got hurt, and then they went to the conference final, and then the next year he came back, they didn't do anything. I knew he was toxic then. I just had this feeling that because he – I knew the first time I knew something about Kyrie was off is when he challenged Kobe to a game of one-on-one. Not because it was Kobe. It was just the mindset of the way he talked to Kobe. I could just sense that, like, he thinks differently than of himself than who he is. Other than the talent, which you could see – I feel like he's always put himself in a different stratosphere. And then when they got to Brooklyn and he said, I see somebody on the other side of this table that can shoot a shot just as good as me, as if you did anything without LeBron. And you always try to act like there was no issue with LeBron, but you know you messed that situation up saying you was going to get surgery. And then you go to Brooklyn and then you mess that situation up. And it's just like you want to be an alpha so bad. And you're riding that coattails of that shot so much when you're not even like a top 75 player, bro. So I just think that he's been a cancer, and I think that people need to stop looking at Kyrie as a a leader. I think you need to look at him as an immensely talented scorer, ball handler, but he is not a leader. And, you know, that's just kind of where I was at. But like I said, they spent $1.5 billion on the first day. Zion, how your fat ass got a $2.231 million rookie extension beats me. But – we can wrap it right there. This has been a good take. I'm glad to be back. Just took, like I said, just took a week off, but it always feels like I've been gone too long. Shout out to my dogs, Tino, Trim, and the other guy. I don't know your name, bro, but I know you're on the show. On the courtroom, rocking the shirt. 
Uh, make sure y'all check them out. Make sure y'all check out my guys, Black to the Basics. Make sure y'all check out all the other podcasts. Uh, shout out Smash. Shout out Dolomite. Shout out Frocast. Shout out Pork L. Shout out everybody. Shout out everybody that's doing something. Uh, Danielle Denise from Girl What. Shout out um, So Problematic. Shout out Wine Time. Shout out everybody. Shout out that's doing the goddamn thing right now. I'm proud of everybody where we came from, the people that still continuing to do it. Uh, this has been another episode of the 8 Morning 92 podcast. Y'all enjoy y'all 4th of July. I'm about to go bust these fireworks out there and turn this motherfucker into Baghdad, and I'm going to holler at y'all later. Peace. This bitch, uh, know we full attack in this shit. Uh, you know the full Mac came equipped. Uh.